This voting machine is called a win vote. It was used in American elections between 2004 and 2014. In 2017, it took hackers just a few hours to play Rick Astley on one of these at a cybersecurity conference. Although the win vote was out of use by then, the stunt pointed to a real problem. American voting machines are old and vulnerable. So why aren't states and counties paying to replace them? In most of the US, voting machines are over a decade old. In 2016, voters in these counties were using machines bought in 2008 or even earlier. At that time, this was America's most popular cell phone. Fast forward to 2018, and the greatest threat to these machines probably isn't hacking. They're not even connected to the internet, so remote, large-scale meddling would be almost impossible. The biggest problem is that they're so old, some of them may not be working right. For over a decade, there have been reports of apparent vote flipping, machine errors, and hardware breaking down across the country. But even though this happens every election, very few machines have been replaced. And to understand why so many machines are failing now, you have to look back at the 2000 election between George Bush and Al Gore. And the lead story at this hour is the state of Florida is too close to call. A nation waits. Election officials decided to count all of the ballots by hand. Punch hole is called a chad. Pierced, but still attached. Hanging chad, and whether it's an allowable vote. What ballots count and what ballots don't count. A hanging chad is the partially torn piece of paper left on a ballot that isn't fully punched out. When the 2000 election went to a recount, Florida officials had to figure out whether hanging chads represented a vote or not. Clearly punched their ballot correctly and there's a hanging chat on the back. It may read one time as no vote, and then a second time as a vote. After the recount, frustrated officials started replacing their old machines with new electronic ones. Typically, state and local officials would pay for this on their own. But after the 2000 election fiasco, the federal government passed the Help America Vote Act, which provided several billion dollars to pay for new equipment. Congress has made a vital contribution to the democratic process. Now it's my honor to sign into law the Help America Vote Act of 2002. The electronic machines got rid of hanging chads, but they also introduced new problems. Officials without security training sometimes chose weak passwords. The software requires regular security updates, and some machines don't have paper backups that can be used to audit voting. A recent report on election security says that conducting elections with paper-based voting systems is one of the most important steps states can take to improve election security. The Help America Vote Act was the first time the federal government provided funding for voting equipment. Now that money is running out, and many machines are failing. Without federal funding, some states, like New Mexico and Rhode Island, have provided money for new machines. But in other states, like New Jersey, officials continue to work with aging equipment. And there's a problem with relying on local funding. It can give an unfair advantage to larger counties. In Texas, for example, two neighboring counties have different budgets for their voting systems. Travis County is home to about a million people. In 2017, their election administration budget was close to $2 million. Next door, rural Blanco County budgeted only 46,000. The problem with this is that state and local officials are expected to pay for new equipment on their own. But that's rarely a priority in the budgets they're given. On the other hand, the federal government has a much larger budget. For now, Congress has approved $380 million to improve the country's election infrastructure. Whether that money will be used to replace all of America's aging voting machines remains to be seen.